We've reviewed board game tables. And it just kind of slots in like that. We've built board game tables. Yes, multiple board game tables. Yeah. Right, so satisfying. Yeah. And now, we've been sent board game tables. <laughs> So as we've clearly established, we are definitely, definitely board game table professional experts. Uh, yeah, so you can trust us, me, the board gamer reviewer person, and my friend, a woodworking board gamer, as we fully review this $3,000 table. Yep, $3,000. This is the Megan table from our friends at Geekinson. It's like some geek had a son and they made this table that cost over 2,000 British pounds, which is a lot in American money. Add this to the rest of the wooden accessories, and this is over three grand. Is this table worth over three grand? Well, I've been using this table regularly for about four months now with all of its features. And then we used our previous board game table, the Duchess, which was 500 bucks for about seven years prior. So there's a lot to share here as we compare and contrast the tables. So let's get into it. Before assembly, we had to send off the old Duchess table. Well, my Duchess, uh, I guess this is it, yeah. You're creaking. Yeah, you're creaking. Yep, that's creaking. Okay. Nice, all right. Work. It was pretty small now, honestly. Yeah, right. What do you think about the, the wood quality? Well, you know, it's uh, it's like better than Ikea, I guess. Table-wise, decent table. Okay. Okay. All right, so you'll be uh, three people, I'll be evil. You like playing the good guys that are like, you know. Yeah, 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 I'm not. For the Megan, you get one huge pallet and two smaller but very dense boxes delivered to your place by a furniture delivery company. Okay. Ah. 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 Okay, that's better. This could fit inside the other table. Now, it didn't come with written instructions beneath the layers of secured wrap, but we looked at the instructions online and no problem there. The Megan assembles way faster than the other two board game tables I've assembled, from both my Duchess table and then the sequel to the Duchess, the Jasper, which was my friend's. Our only gripe with this assembly was this nut placement. It gives you such little room to tighten the bolts. Good wood, man, good wood. Okay, this is actually pretty difficult to put on. Oh, Lord. Oh. I'm real careful with my fingers here. Other than that, smooth sailing. Whoa, that is beautiful. Rather pretty looking. That feels pretty <laughs> sexy. That feels pretty solid. Man. <clears throat> Not as heavy as I thought it was gonna be, actually. Wow, it feels so sturdy. Oh. Oh, my Holy God. shit. Oh, my God. That feels nice. <laughs> this piece on. Wow, that's so easy, too. You replaced it. Yeah. Cool. I guess you don't really need instructions. This is freaking sturdy. This feels so nice. Wow. Now, now here's the important test. Is it, is it comfortable? Oh, it's so smooth. As you just heard us freaking out during the assembly of the table, yes, it is absolutely gorgeous. We have the transparent color of the Megan table, and that translates to all this nice looking pine oak. It's made out of oak. Ignore myself here, listen to my voice now. It's made out of European oak. It's really amazing looking grain that makes this table both look unique and high quality, especially compared to the poop brown of our old Duchess table. Even the mistakes in the wood where it's filled with epoxy look special to the eye, so every table is gonna look slightly unique. Real talk, the transparent color is like a pottery barn look or something, and we can't deny that it just looks so well made at every angle. My mom personally asked me if she could have this table, so yeah, this is mom approved stuff. She did not like the Duchess. I think games pop even on the top grain, but of course you're supposed to use the inside arena. This inside is a bright blue, which really doesn't blend in with many games and feels to be the perfect size to play with about four players. There's gonna be stats all around the screen for our medium sized Megan table. In our case, four reasonably sized men can use this arena and have a very comfortable time. Probably most importantly, the mat works great to take cards and player boards easily on and off. 
It just bends under your fingers, pick up the card, and then go. And listen to how pieces sound on this mat. Also, the bottom isn't just some generic mat. It's some type of matted board. So when you want to take it out, it's one solid piece that isn't gonna warp. And then the plywood underneath can also be taken out. This one piece for the arena bottom makes me so happy because the previous Duchess we had was a bunch of slots of plywood that were screwed in. When these different pieces started sticking up in different directions, the inside of the table was just completely unusable at some point. It was a board game arena that wasn't flat. One ingenious thing is the built-in card holders. These are hidden right under where the topper goes, where it's so nondescript, we didn't even realize this was here at first. Sure, the bottom of cards will be cut off, but this is usable for most games out there, from Catan to Brass Birmingham. If you don't want to use these, then you can just forget about it. It's like these card holders aren't even there. My personal favorite is actually the topper system, where the topper is just six slabs of wood that can be managed with one hand. This is for putting them on the table or taking them off. This is a huge, and I mean huge, level up from our previous Duchess, where that topper was two pieces instead of six. So each of its two slabs was like 30 pounds. It was freaking 31.2 pounds. I weighed that myself. With the Megan, it's now just six slabs of five pounds each, they don't pose any safety hazards when moving them around. Like, look at these two slabs still there in the background. This should show you how unwieldy using two slabs for a topper is. Where do you put these when you're playing? What's more is that the toppers all slot into each other super cleanly with foam, making a tight seal on the table when closing it all up. It's so secure, probably pretty watertight, though I'm not going to test that. To take these out, there's a hidden lever on the bottom of the table, which pops one of the toppers out. Then you just grab it and you're good to go. I was initially concerned that taking these toppers in and out with such a tight fit would cause damage to the wood, but I've been doing this constantly with really minimal wear on the toppers and tabletop. The table also comes with something called a strake board, which is a big block of wood that separates the parts of the table with the topper and the parts without the topper. I found this pretty useful and fun to play with, as sometimes you just want part of a table for food or a laptop, and then you put the strake board in to prevent the area with the topper from ever getting pieces underneath it. This is just super useful to make your gaming surface versus flat top table surface really customizable. Then this rail being four inches is actually very comfortable to my liking as opposed to the Duchess over there being 2.75 inches. That one was a little more tough to store components on if you had to, but also a little more rough on our bodies. Now I can rest my arms, elbows, and even phone in just a bigger surface. Then this rail just goes hand in hand with how this table is super secure. Like, look at this. It doesn't move. It, it just doesn't move, which is impressive for a four-legged design. Ah. Look, I'm about six foot and I feel very comfortable on this table. I can lean here, I can lean there. It, it's just not moving, it's not budging. I really have to stress this because our previous $500 Duchess was um So that shakiness could have been due to this sun room, which is really poorly insulated, which gives you a variance in temperature, which can really affect wood. That paired with poor materials and joint design can make the shakiness even worse. But this Megan table, it's been totally fine in this sunroom. So let's actually bring in my woodworking friend, Pernav, to explain. A lot of the pieces they put together, like a lot of the joints they used and everything have a lot of good play in them. And then I noticed when we were like screwing in the stuff for the leg hardware too, there was a good amount of play in all of the pieces there, which counterintuitively is really good when it comes to wood, especially in a room like this, which constantly gets affected by seasons. This table has the ability to expand and contract along with the seasons in a way that I'm almost certain the other table you had did not do as well. <laughs> All things considered, yeah, this table is pretty darn awesome. And I'll have some more thoughts later in the video whether or not this is worth $2,700 just for the table. But now I have some issues I wanna talk about, none of which are big deals, but I gotta let you know. The six topper system actually isn't perfectly implemented because it doesn't sit exactly flush with the rest of the table. And then the toppers do have some slots in between them. 
If you find yourself in a game night wanting to play some games on the topper, cards can sometimes get a bit caught when you're moving them around. It is pretty cool that in these holes you can put cards, but they're facing kind of a weird way because you're probably not going to be playing games against each other lengthwise. Though this is where I have to praise the craftsmanship, because there's a little lip on the rail of the table that really eases the difference in heights. So this is mostly a warning if you need to do anything that requires a legitimately flat surface, like having a bunch of papers out and writing on them. There's also been plenty of times I've been doing some crafts of punching out board game pieces on the table, and little bits would get stuck in the slots. I don't eat on this table, but I could actually see little breadcrumbs or little bits of food getting stuck on the topper. I do use this table for work though, and when typing on my laptop, putting half of it on the rail and half on the topper, I could definitely feel it's slightly off balance, like maybe there's a millimeter off somewhere. But then this is pretty okay if I put the laptop only on the toppers. This is not a big deal, it's not going to matter to most board gamers out there. And if you eat with placemats on your table, then the crumbs probably are not going to get in the topper. Now we got to talk about the extra $402 of this table, all of these accessories. You've probably seen that there's this metal rail running through every single side of the table and you just take your accessory and you just lock it in like that. Now we don't have every single accessory on the website because that would break the bank, but we do have cup holders, mug holder, component holders, side table, large accessory tray, and iPad holder. These are all made from the same wood as the table, so they feel generally good to use, with the rail system letting you put each accessory on, take it off, slide it around, but more thoughts on that later. The bottom looks like to be some type of aluminum that is glued on. This also goes into a slot in the wood on some of the accessories. It's not coming off anytime soon. A metal on metal connection also feels easier to slide compared to wood on wood, as we've seen in our friend's Jasper table for his cup holders. It doesn't slide smoothly. And this rail system is so versatile. Now I can set up my little throne of water and board game pieces around me anywhere I sit on the table. Or if I need a bunch of extra room for a rule book, this side table is awesome. It's so strong too, it just feels so sturdy to put an elbow on, though I'm not going to stand on it as tempting as that is. This large accessory tray is also going to be extremely useful to put wallets or keys in, or just put a pen in for certain games. Then this iPad holder has proved to be a nice fit for my phone, though I like to not be a phone addict and have a screen constantly facing me during game night. Definitely better for a tablet that can be charged with the hole on the bottom. And then let me show you a little secret. You see, when you're not using these accessories, you might think they'll take up space inside your house or apartment, but you can store it perfectly in the topper. Inside the topper! I'm not sure if this was on purpose or not, but it's amazing. Some of these accessories are definitely better than others though, so let's bring in again our woodworking enthusiast skeptic Pranav to break these down. Uh, here we have the Geek and Sun oh, Megan table, Megan table uh, with some of the rather beautiful looking uh, attachments they have here. One small thing, if they had put some sort of like felt padding or something in here, maybe just in the spot like right on the top of this rail here, then it would have negated some of the, uh, some of the, you can actually see on the uh, track right here, there's like scratch marks along there from trying to slide it. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty new, but there's still like a couple scratch marks here just from trying to slide it around. Sorry. Huh? Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, you can kind of see like, as you slide it, it's definitely like, there's definitely unwanted contact there. Another thing, you can't really utilize these corners as well. Like you can't actually keep it in the corner because like this is actually pressed up against that external piece of wood. And here's something that I thought was kind of interesting in terms of design. You can kind of see like these extra parts kicking out here, right? Mm -hmm. While it looks pretty, it's just kind of counterintuitive to me because if these didn't exist, right? Like if these little like, what do you call them, like flanges? If they didn't exist, then you could actually like comfortably keep this up against the edge here. It would like flush out with the edge here and it'd be fine, right? So I think there's gotta be a good, I can't think of a good reason for why they have them there, uh, outside of aesthetics, of course. Secondly, you can kind of see the two here. So this is the mug holder. Another, like, again, I, I should preface all of this by saying, it is very pretty. Like they all look very nice and they're all functional. Okay, you know the... Yeah, but the hey. concern is, is that what if then it's like wet? 
Yeah, yeah right? It's like, all wet. <laughs> yeah. like, I have never once, like, made coffee without the bottom part of this getting wet, just at least a little bit. Like, you're going to end up with a ring in there. I don't know. It just... It's a little... It, it, it just feels a little short, if I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. It won't get on your games, which is what's important, so... That's all good. You can kind of tell there's a little bit less love put into the mug holder. Uh, like you can tell like the cleanly chamfered edges you see along here, right? Versus like this just looks like someone just cut it out, just sort of like cut, cut, and then just like left it, you know? Uh, this one here. Okay, this deep component tray. Oh, they, I did not notice this earlier. Is this like a piece that's kind of loose in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit of glue would have gone a long way. It's a little sharp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. again, a little bit less love. <laughs> That's okay. Um, but yeah, it, it, it feels functional. One thing, for some reason, this is like tilted upwards at a weird angle. Did I not put this in correctly? Oh, there we go, that's better. I think this would make a decent dice tray. You could just like leave dice there and then just like knock them into here to roll them. And then no one, no one can see your results. Yeah, that's the problem. I guess if you're like playing as a DM, it makes sense. Oh, so like, yeah, yeah, yeah. this could be like your little DM corner, you know? I can, cause you know, as a DM, uh, I like to roll dice, and then if I don't get the results I want, I'll just lie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's how it is, though. Uh, he definitely did not critical hit you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he definitely missed. You did, you you won. You got through that. Nice, good job. Oh god, I hate that. The annoying part is the the walls are not sloped, like uh, the wormwood tiles. Like you can see how the slope really helps you like grab exactly what you need out of it, right? With like this one, I have to like actively figure out what's what and like, I don't know. This component tray is way bigger than it needs to be. Just if this was divided in two, then it would actually have been kind of perfect. Like if it was triangularly divided in two or just like even linearly divided in two. This is, this is probably the thing that I have the most complaints about because everything else is really simple. <laughs> with all that being said, if I had an order to recommend these, it would be number one, the cup holder. You gotta have your cup holders. Number two would be the side table. Then the large accessory tray. After these, my enthusiasm is going down a bit. The iPad holder is fine, but a pretty niche use. So yeah, if you really want it, go for it. And then the component holder is just really shallow where it could have been good, but this size is just kind of a weird, too wide, not deep enough, not comfortable to use. It's, it's okay though, if you need extra space. And then this mug holder, as Pranav and I were talking about, is just kind of weird, and it's not even going to fit every mug out there. Now we get to it. Is this worth over three grand? Over three grand. Like, the price breakdown is below. That's a lot of cash. Think of how many board games you could buy for 3,100 something dollars. We have to go back to my old Duchess table, which was worth $800, $850 on Kickstarter when I bought it and I got it for 500 bucks. See, that was definitely cool at first, but then we started running into the huge problem with the inside sticking up. Then the topper was a giant pain in the butt to take on and off. Okay. Oh shit. So at some point we almost exclusively used it just to play on the topper. Which in that case, yeah, it's a nice size to play games on, but why pay so much cash for the unique lowered arena? And playing on the topper had its own issues because the center connections were sticking up. Geekinson's Megan table has no issues yet, while looking fantastic, especially if the metal rails don't distract you too much. We are in this room all the time at Shelfside, subjecting not only our board games, but our board game tables to some abuse. Get out my shit. The Megan has truly withstood the test of the four grueling, rough months that we've had it. Again, let's go back to our resident man who's good with wood to talk about value. If you're looking for a table that will last you for a while, good, good wood quality, like good quality wood like this with a decent finish and everything on it. Like this is held together really well. It's a very sturdy table. Like I was saying earlier to Ashton, if you bought this in like your, when you made enough money for it, second or third apartment and you wanted to keep it for like a decade or two, this would easily last that, like easily. No doubt in my mind this would last you like two decades. Uh, this is definitely worth $2,700, personally. What do I personally think? Well, I like it, but I'm also a bit frustrated. I like the table, I like how it looks and functions and how games look on it, but that's in a vacuum because this table 
just doesn't fit this room. Whatever, right? Geekinson was kind enough to send us this table, so call me a choosy beggar. It doesn't really match the floor. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, my, that's my one thing. Yeah. The biggest annoyance, I don't think I could play six player TI4 on this. The map fits, but there's just no way we're gonna cram six people around this table. So yeah, call me a choosy beggar. I just really wanna play TI4 again with six players in my game room. I mean, that's why I have a game room, right? So come on, Geekinson. Uh, I'll do anything, I'll do anything, Geekinson. It actually kind of sounds nice on the wood. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. Like this sounds like just uh, like your generic this... dice rolling. Game. Yeah, exactly right. And then this is definitely my favorite in here, though. Thank you to our patrons for making videos like this possible. All that going down there. All that going down there. We also got our man lads of cardboard right over here. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and hopefully we'll get more table reviews out for you guys because I think we have some more in the pipeline. So we'll see. Yeah, comment what you think of this table. See ya.